Today we're going to see an integration demonstration between ServiceNow, Service Desk, and Salesforce Service Cloud. Specifically, we're going to be looking at two particular um, integration samples. One, we're going to have cases in Salesforce create problems in ServiceNow. And this particular integration can happen both ways, so we'll see bidirectional creation of these artifact types. Further, we're going to see a, a different um, attribute updates going back and forth. We'll also see status and progress updates. And then we'll also look at comments and attachments for some additional um, communication purposes. So let's jump right to it. So here I have a list of problems. And we're going to go ahead and create up a demo problem on this side. And I'm going to say demo problem. And I'll give some more details. And I'm going to go ahead and submit that. So one of the things, the integration is not going to be kicked off until we assign this particular problem to our Salesforce team because you don't want to synchronize everything um, all together. You might want to be applying some sort of a logic or filter. So I'm going to go ahead and apply Salesforce here. And once we apply that as our assignment group um, of interest, the integration will kick off and create a um, case in Salesforce. So now if I refresh this list here, I can see that my alternate ID has already been filled out with a case ID. This means that the integration has already taken place and we will have uh, a new case created in Salesforce. So let's look at it. So if I look at the list of cases, I can see that my demo problem has been created here at the top. And you can also see that similarly we can have our alternate ID uh, populated with ServiceNow number as well as uh, populating um, the alternate URL with our location in ServiceNow. Now, as far as ongoing communication and ongoing attribute updates, you could be changing some of these fields, changing priority, you could be changing status to communicate um, status updates, so we'll click into this um, case. And I could say that uh, the status is actually now open, And we will take a look at these changes being populated in ServiceNow. So if I jump back over to my problem and refresh my list here, a couple of things have happened. So we can see that the priority has been boosted up as well as status has been changed. So any of these pieces that you want to keep in sync, you can keep in sync, uh, up to date on both sides and both teams essentially get the latest information. Now, as a next step, just to show some additional functionality for this particular use case, we're going to um, add some comments. And we're going to say, please provide more details. And we're going to actually add an attachment, a sample screenshot. And we're going to go ahead and submit all those changes. So now just to validate that comments and attachments can flow and your teams can communicate via those, we'll jump back over to this case and refresh on this side. We'll see a couple of things here. We can see that a case comment has been added. So we can see that our team from ServiceNow needs to know more details. And also we can see that this screenshot has been added. So from a basic use case perspective, that's to show um, artifact creation, different attribute updates, as well as comments and attachments. Now, as the next step, we'll actually look at a little more advanced use case. You could say that your teams are actually collaborating only on a subset of artifacts. So we could have incidents being created in ServiceNow and broken down into incident tasks and then have that be creating a higher level ticket and then um, have it synchronize over cases as actually 
lower level tasks. So on each different case and task, the teams can be collaborating, but they kind of roll up, up to that um, higher level object. So let's look at that use case. So we'll start it off on uh, ServiceNow side. So we're going to create a sample incident. And we're going to assign a caller. And we'll also just call it uh, demo incident. Similar. So now this incident will actually be creating that higher level ticket in um, Salesforce, but we will be creating the lower level incident task that we will actually be working on and collaborating on. So if I open this incident, so now if we're going to go down on the bottom of this incident, and we'll go ahead and add a couple incident tasks here. And we'll add a couple more. So now the logic that we're going to go through is that we have two incident tasks and one of them we actually want to collaborate on with our Salesforce team. So again, we're going to be using assignment group as that trigger. And the other one we don't want to, we, we might not want to synchronize over and we want to keep the other incident task within uh, ServiceNow only. So at this point, if we jump over to our, um, the demo incident that we just synchronized. So um, if we scroll down and there's just some basic things on this incident, as, uh, on this ticket that is representing the incident, but also we can see that the sample task has been synchronized over as a child case. So this way you can maintain hierarchy and context between work items and uh, different objects in case you do want to communicate on multiple levels. And similar to what we saw with our cases and problems, we can start communicating about these incident about these tasks um, in multiple different ways. We can uh, communicate status updates. We could communicate priority changes. So any of the details that you would want to flow back to Salesforce, you could um, synchronize those. Now I'll jump back over to my ticket and refresh my page. I can see that my status is now moved to open, priority moved to high. And same way from this side, I could jump into my sample task and actually move this status to resolved. And if I want to navigate to ServiceNow, I can just click this alternate URL link that will take me straight to my ServiceNow incident task. and. If I refresh this form, I can see that now the state is switched to close complete. So status can be synchronized both ways. It's up to you to decide on directionality for that. That was a short demonstration of integrating Salesforce Service Cloud and ServiceNow Service Desk. For more information, please visit tasktop.com.